Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ori and today uh, in my talk I'll... What happened? I just want to see if you can wake up soon? Good. Okay, in today in my talk I will make a case for why your first game should never be a commercial game. And the talk is called named Free For All. And this will be a part talk and part discussion. I'll try to leave a few minutes in the end to hear about your perspective and whether you agree or disagree or had an experience which is different or the same from what I'm about to describe. So uh, let's start a little bit about me first. I live in Haifa and this is uh, the view from my window. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a bachelor's degree in computer science from the Technion. By day, I'm a software engineer at Google and by night, I'm an independent game developer. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, developing games also as part of the uh, Ugly Cake Games. <laughs> our most, uh, our largest project so far is Volcano Tower. It's a project that uh, I made together with uh, Yaron Granat. Uh, Alon Kaplan did the music. <laughs> and uh, it took us three years of work total from the first pixel drawn and the first uh, line of code until it was fully uh, released to all platforms. We released it on mobile, Android and iOS in a freemium model. We released it for free with in-app purchases and ads and whatnot. And uh, later we released it uh, on Steam, uh, PC version, in a premium model uh, with a few uh, additions and uh, modifications to fit the PC. Uh, also, these are uh, other games I made in jams and uh, with collaboration. This one I made uh, with a stab here in the last engine and also with a launch. Okay, so you want to make a game, you're approaching making your first game maybe. Uh, just a quick poll, uh, who, please raise your hand if you're interested in the world of making video games. Great, so please, please leave your hand in the air if you started working, ever worked on a game project or started working on a project. So now leave your hand in the air only if you ever finished a game project and released it. Okay, nice, nice, not bad. Okay, so um, I'm saying that your game, your first game shouldn't be commercial. And by commercial I mean any game that should, uh, that is aimed to uh, be sold and make money in any way, ads or in you know, purchases. And I'm saying that your first game shouldn't be commercial and you should release it for free. And you might be asking, why should I give, my way, give away my game for free, right? I worked hard on it. I deserve uh, getting doing something for me, right? And, and there are several reasons. The first, of, the first is that you should start small. Everyone agrees that your first game should be small, right? You shouldn't go, go too large because then it will be very hard to finish. But uh, it's, uh, many people do not agree about how small it should be. And uh, when you're working on a commercial game, uh, it may, I, I think it clouds your judgment about how small the game should be. Because these games are considered small, on, these are like small Steam games, like small indie games. Uh, they, they, they are like 2D and, uh, and they're just a few hours of gameplay. Uh, but they're, they're not small enough. They're games that took years to make by very experienced people. And you should go smaller if you ever want to finish your game. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 there is... A, you really cannot go small enough. Because in the worst case, you make a small game, you finish it, you release it, you move on to the next game. I believe that you... Uh, uh, what works, in my opinion, is that uh, your first game should have one core concept and minimal content to demonstrate it. For example, if your game is with a character that jumps in a very specific way, make a few levels that uh, put this jump in use in an interesting way, and that's it. It shouldn't be like more than 10 minutes of uh, play overall. Another reason is that making a commercial game is inherently more difficult than making a free game. You might think, okay, so I'll make my first game, I'll make it small, then I'll just stick a price tag on it and sell it so I can make some money. Well, what's the problem? Well, why not? Well, well, there is a lot of effort required just to make your game commercial, uh, feeding to all the different platforms. Uh, Steam has uh, harsh requirements about your game. Before that, they will not 
let you publish even your game page, not to, say, not to talk about your game. Uh, Android and iOS has uh, restrictions. For example, in Volcano Tower, it took us about a year and a half to make the actual game. Uh, one more year to make it work with in-app purchases and ads and everything on Android and iOS. iOS took longer than how Android did. And about uh, six more months to release it uh, completely on Steam. And that's, how, that's when you, after a year and a half, you would play the game and it would feel complete. And it still took us all this time just to make it commercial. And there is this beautiful postmortem about, about this game, uh, Toto Temple, about how they released it uh, on three uh, uh, consoles, like PC, Xbox, Wii, and PlayStation. And it took them about one year to, take the, to make the game, and then two years to make it work on all the platforms. Okay, so if you plan a commercial game, double the time, or even triple the time you think it will gonna take you to make. Another reason is because the promise of future revenue will make you work too hard. Uh, if you are holding a day job and working by nights, like I do, then this time, uh, when you're at home, and the weekends, uh, the evening, it's a precious time for you, when you need to rest and you need to uh, meet your family and friends, and when you use this time uh, to make something else, it takes, uh, it takes a toll on you. It's, uh, and it's something that you really need the good, a good motivation in order to do it. If you make games, I think making games is an uplifting uh, experience, and it's, uh, it's full of exploration and creativity, and, and I really think it's worth the, worth the time spending. But if you're doing it for, for the money, and if, you, if you're working hard if, for the promise of future profit, it will be hard to go on. Because money, at, at the end of the day, is not a good motivator. As each boss knows, uh, your, work, your, if, your employees do not only have to like, get a good salary, their work should also be fulfilling and interesting. So when you're managing yourself, people people tend to forget that. They uh, and when you're working on an independent game, it's your time to uh, to spend the little time you have on things that are interesting for you and uh, making you want to continue to work. And even if you're working on the, your game full time, that's even more important because that's where you even tend even more to work too hard and to spend time on things that are not uh, necessary. And don't <laughs> self-induce crunch yourself, never. Because you're thinking about the long run. You'll be worn out quite soon. Now I want to tell you a story about a collaboration I made a uh, few years ago when I made a game. I, pen I made like a, a Pong-like game with power-ups and whatnot. It was a fun game. I started by making it to work completely with uh, uh, placeholders. The I, I, I'm a programmer. Um, I built a game with completely with placeholders. It was fun to play. It was working, but it looked like shit. Like shit, because all the power-ups, for example, they were all like circles with text, no art at all. It was a, a flesh at the time, and I gave it to a friend of. I gave the ga I gave the game file to a friend of mine was an artist, and I told him, now do the art for the game. Do the art. And I expected him to make me some cool icons, <laughs> and like make the, and like may, may put a, a nice theme on the game, and when he sent me the game file back, I was horrified to discover that what he did was a little bit more like this. <laughs> <laughs> he took everything, all, all my placeholders, <laughs> And like made them pretty. That's awesome. It's ironically brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not not at all what I intended. It was a pong game. I thought it's it's there. His time to shine. He should make it like two monkeys playing with a coconut or something. Like make a cool concept out of it. I'm just a programmer. Um, and and the sad, the sad thing is that after that experience, I made the same mistake. I think about four or five more times, <laughs> like making a pure placeholder game and expecting the, an, an artist to, to uh, cover up for me. And that brings me to the next point. 
uh, you will overestimate your colleagues. It's, anyway, it's easy to overestimate what others will do for you, right? Or for the game. Because um, you will, first of all, you will overestimate their share of the work. To make a game, there are so many tasks and so many little things that need to be done. That's not just programming and art. There's also uh, game design, level design, and and making everything work together. And it's and when you start a game, uh, you sometimes you start it with a team. Sometimes you start it alone and then search for people to work for you. And that's great. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge believer of just start to work and people will join afterwards. But but try not to, to overestimate. I feel it's inevitable to overestimate what they will do, and this comes with experience. And uh, with your and in your first game, it's really hard to foresee all the, all those little tasks. And game design is usually the one that is forgotten. And you see games that, are, that look pretty, that are programmed okay, but the game itself doesn't work. And this the, this thing comes only with only with experience. So that uh, so it's really hard to do it well in your first game. You will over also overestimate uh, your colleagues' motivation. Uh, if, if it's your game, then you're willing to like work nights and do everything to make it come out. And you think that if it's a commercial game and there's a promise of like future revenue, and even you maybe spend some of your own money, you maybe get investors. You think that because it's a commercial game, you'll get like more motivated people that will work for you. Will get like people that will work day and night and but it wouldn't work because money is still not a good motivator. You should, what you should expect from your colleagues to, to invest from their personal lives and time to make this game is the same as you would expect if, if this game was free. So making a commercial game will cloud your judgment about how excited and motivated people would, would work with you and that's why I think many uh, game teams uh, split and change over time because there is a mismatch between what, what they expect from each other. To work, even if there is money, uh, a promise of money at the end, or even actual money, right now, and you are overestimate their experience. At the end of the day, uh, people want uh, again because money is not a motivator. Uh, people will experienced people will would want to work with experienced people because they know how much experience is uh, valuable uh, when making a game. Uh, if if you're just a beginner, and it's your first game you're probably going to work with other beginners, and it's great. You, you could grow together and learn together and discover new things and discover challenges, but it, it will be, but don't expect like an artist to come and make this beautiful uh, art for your game if you're just a beginner, because the artist will also be a beginner. And, even, and there are a lot of talented artists out there, but there are a few that are experienced in making games, which is different than just being a talented artist. The same about programmers. There are a lot of programmers. Uh, a few uh, are experienced in making games, and, uh, you sh and your colleagues will be in the same level of experience as you are. Another reason, which I think is the harshest, is that building a uh, business is not the same skill as building a game. Even if you make the best game and you're a very good game, de game developer, you're probably, uh, it's, it doesn't guarantee that your game will succeed financially because you should run it like a business from the start. What usually people do is think of an idea for a game, then start making it, right? And that's what you should do when you're a beginner and it's your first game and you're just learning. But if you're building a business, you have to think like a business before you start developing your game. I'll just give a few examples. There are many more. But there are a few that I encountered at, at one point or the other. Uh, you should uh, see how similar games are selling. For example, uh, I see a talk, I don't remember by who, that said that he made a puzzle platformer and he thought that puzzle platformers are, are uh, very popular. But the truth is that there are a few very popular puzzle platformers, but like in the, lo in the long tail of games, they are not very popular. Uh, you should think about how your game will stand out. 
even if your game is awesome, you sh it, it should still stand out among all the huge variations of, game out, of games out there. Even if you're making a cool, unique RPG game, but its screenshot is like, um, looks not really good with all those little details which do not really appeal to the player, it won't sell, even if it's really good. Uh, you should think about the trailer, you should think about how Let's Play videos would look. Um, because that's a major way to spread your game, when YouTubers play your game. Um, for example, uh, yeah. for example, uh, when Tomer Barkan uh, started making uh, Dream Engines, he... Uh, he uh, the decision on the theme started, became very early, and he decided on this theme of like Tim Burton like game to make the screenshots very appealing and the gameplay elements came later. I didn't ask him for permission to use this example, I hope he's okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> you should estimate how much time it will take because uh, time, uh, time is money and if you make a successful game and, but it's over, it took you six years of development, then it's not a good business and, and it's not sustainable. And, uh, and the world of freemium games is even tougher when, you ca when it comes to making it a business and not just a, a game. Because the uh, business model and the, gameplay is, and, the, and the gameplay are entwined with each other and are inseparable and you can't start a game, a freemium game, and just in the middle start thinking of how it will work as a business. And that's kind of what we did with Volcano Tower. And it didn't really work. For example, you have to think of progression and metagame. Uh, in uh, house tapes, for example, yeah, how, how much time will a player be able to continue playing your game and still make progress? For example, in homescapes, uh, it's a match three game, but it's also a home decoration game, and you can never really finish decorating your home. It's like an endless. Uh, 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 process of getting just better and better, and all the while you like play these match three games. And what we did on Volcano Tower, we had meta game, but it wasn't endless. It was it, 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 it would hold you for a few, let's say maybe weeks of play, but it was not designed to work forever, and it didn't. And though people really enjoyed uh, playing the game and progressing, at some point they had enough and moved to the next game. Which is okay for, for general games, but not for a few game you're expecting to make money on. Uh, you should think of the session length. It's, if it's a mobile game, people should be able to uh, pick, pick up their phone, play the game for 30 minutes and, and uh, be, be going on uh, with the lights when they on the toilets or anything. For example, Clash Royale. Each session is um, capped by three minutes, and that's it. And when you play, you know it won't take you more. In Volcano Tower, it was not the case. Sessions could take up to seven minutes if you were good. Actually, if you were good, the session would take longer, which means the longer you you play, the less you're able to like play it fast. And in streaming games, you should all, always do analytics and research. Uh, even after you release your game, and that's something we didn't take into account when we built Volcano Tower. Uh, we have, you have to continue work after you release your game and just measure everything to see what makes money and change it and modify it. And it's really endless, and uh, we, should, uh, uh, yeah, we should have thought about this like in an earlier stage, but maybe choosing a different project. And there are much more things, there's just a, a few, to uh, remind you that um, that if you're not thinking of all of these, or and many more, before you start making your game, uh, the, the chances that your game will make profit are not so big. But that's okay, because the, the best thing you can gain from making and releasing a game is not money, is like getting better and learning and growing. And the best way to learn and grow is by getting feedback. If you make your game commercial, then it will be behind the paywall, and an inevitable outcome of it is that less people will play it. 
and uh, that's, that's, that's just the harsh uh, facts of life. And then less people will play, you'll get, you'll get less feedback, which is really the main key for you to, to grow, and there is something you will learn on your game only after you release it and only after you get uh, feedback. And it's also, uh, getting feedback gives you a huge motivation boost to do your first game. For example, we got all these uh, Let's Play videos of Volcano Tower, which really warmed my heart and made me happy and uh, gave me like the strength to continue making games. And there was also this huge uh, <laughs> uh, feedback <laughs> rant thing we got on Neon Ball. Yeah, that's, that's in Newgrounds. We released Neon Ball on Newgrounds and we got this huge thing that we, we gave us a lot of feedback on the game and I actually learned a lot from it. And I uh, thought of making a talk, like based on some of the things he said, but I didn't get to it yet. It was in 2013. He said that this puzzle game is pretty good, but it could be great, which is kind of the best thing you want to hear on a review, because that means you can learn a lot from it. And last reason is because your game doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, it's okay to make a game and make it like the, the best you can at this point, but do not like linger on your game for several years. Try to make every little point of it like perfect. Just just make the game, release it, learn from it, and move on to the next one. And it will teach you much more than like making like, just obsessing over one game. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Finishing games is hard, because there are a lot you don't expect that should be done. But it's possible if you aim for a small scope, for a first game it should be not more than 10 minutes of play. You should focus on core game features and not for everything you dream that should be in a game or anything that you think would make profit. And you should focus on what's fun and interesting for you to make, uh, even if it means even if it's not what you think others will love. Because what you will love, it's what others will, will eventually love too. Collaborating with other people is very hard. It's a skill that you need to work on and gain, together with making games. Uh, it's possible if you form a team that works from the joy of creation and not for the promise of future profit. Because that doesn't keep people in your team. Uh, it's possible if you, everyone knows the right share of work. Well, that's actually possible to really know all the work, but if, you, if everyone is willing to do a little extra, um, it may work, but only if you keep a small scope. And making money is hard, but it's possible if you work like a business from the start, if you can assess how much time it will work and how much money you're expecting to gain, so you can like, work around that. And if you're prepared to, to fail a few times before you succeed. And if, if, if your first game like devastates you, you'll never be able to move on. And all of these are just not possible in your first game. And a few final words. Uh, this talk was born uh, from my experience making a commercial game and from uh, my experience of talking to others and hearing their stories about the, how they made their games. And there are a lot of great games in development. There are a few games that are actually finished and released out there. And I would really like to see like more people uh, joining this industry and making games and like increase the like jo join us in this journey of making games. And even if you're if you, even if you dream of making a commercial game, don't worry, you'll get there. Eventually, one game at a time. Because as the uh, ancient Chinese, Chinese proverb says, even a, even a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single video game. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so now uh, it's time for questions and uh, I would really love to hear your experience of making your first game or making a commercial game or everything that goes in line or contradicts anything I said. So please uh, go ahead. Yes. I actually have a question because I was fascinated with what happened with the text 
<laughs> the bubbles. How did that happen? Like, did you just you had no brief and they just created that graphic? Ah, I get them a board for text. I think they created a picture of the shadow. Because they took the text. How did they create it? They didn't have some brief, some clue. No, no. I just gave him the game file and I told him like, make this, make the art. Do the art. It was, it was really one of my first games. And he, he was supposed to make the art, right? Art, art means story. Art means like plot. Art means stone. If it was a horror game, it was his job to make it a horror game, right? Because he's part of the art. If there's a story at the beginning, a little video about monsters and how they... It's, it's his job, because it's art. <laughs> so we <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, actually, I believe that your first game shouldn't even be uh, based on, on an idea you would love. I mean, I think your first game shouldn't be something you love, and on the contrary, maybe something you, you don't like or even hate. Because that's, that's uh, how you can make your first game your uh, training ground. What do you think about it? I think you shouldn't be so scared of wasting the ideas that you love. If you have a good idea, don't like save it from the time for the time you will have like experience and make just just make something small out of it. Even if, if it's an idea that can keep you can you can maybe you can make a 10 hour game out of this idea because it's very brilliant. You can also make if it's so brilliant, you can also make a five minute game out of it or a 15 minute game out of it. And if it's if, if people will love your 15 minute game, You can always extend it to a full game. You shouldn't like hold your ideas for later. And, uh, but also don't get in love with your game and like make it, oh, it's good, I'm making an hour. No, we released the, the 15 minute game. It will actually be a great uh, teaser for people to follow the, uh, the full game. For example, Baba Is You, do you know it? It was released, yeah. it was like a huge, it was a, a, a two day game jam game. And it was a huge hit, and then he made it a full game, and the, the, the smaller game just made the, the larger game more popular. So you should just, just make it. Um, about Volcano Tower. Yes. Uh, did you make this game uh, while thinking about money from the start, or was it a passion game? Um, it was actually a mixture of both, because of some, miscommunica some miscommunication between Yaron and I. Uh, Yaron was the one who, he already had all the assets, or most of the, not most of the, but enough assets to make like a, a, the, a, a cool prototype out of it. And I said, oh, cool assets, I just like work, work fast, and uh, like work six months, and uh, make a game out of it, and we'll release it, and we'll continue forward, because I have many of these opinions I, hold, I held even before I started making Volcano Tower, but I still fell into, into, uh, into that uh, huge project. And uh, in the middle of the, after a few months, he said, okay, now, uh, now it's time to implement the quests. What, what quests? <laughs> and then he said, now it's time to implement the in-app purchases. What? <laughs> and now, we, we, we really had a, like a bad communication <laughs> about it. And, and I think we had a lot of like goodwill and like friendship between us. And that's the only reason it could work because otherwise it would have been a disaster. And at the end, we really like, at, at the end, We both realized that it really was too much, and we just tried to finish it, and we did, but we really like, gave up a lot of the business uh, aspects on the way. We kept all the business mechanics, we're still making some money out of it, but, but uh, it's, it's not like a business we earn from like, regularly. Right? I said your first uh, game should be as simple as, uh, as it can be. And the second one is going to be harder, bigger, etc, etc. And uh, which point of time do you say to yourself, okay, now it's the time to develop my uh, dream game? Okay, that's, that's a great question. Uh, I expected that question. Uh, that really depends, but uh, the more you make games, the more you know how much you don't know. And actually, the more you make games, it will actually a little bit bring your motivation to make a commercial down, game down a little bit, that is good because you, you, you're getting more realistic. And after you, you feel you have a good grip of making game and, 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 uh, and like uh, handling all the game part, you can start handling the business part. And, and that's when you, you feel confident to, to start dipping your toes there. But it also doesn't have to be when you're like, you're, you're a perfect game designer and you always, 
only one, now you're only, all, all, all you have left to learn is the business part. It's okay to dip toe in the, in the business uh, realm as well, even if you don't, even, as I said, you can, it's okay to fail. If after you're making some games and you, you know you're gonna uh, want to make a commercial game in the future, it's okay to start making commercial games even if they will not uh, succeed financially because you will learn a lot in the process. So your first commercial game does, will not be and doesn't have to be your first successful commercial game. So when you feel you have a good grip of, of making games, and it's, it's, it cannot be on your first game, but if you make some, you, 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 you can feel uh, uh, confident in starting to making commercial games, and then after you make commercial games, which that, are also, that should also be like small and concise and around a single uh, core game and not like a, a six-year project that you, everything you dream of. After that, you, you'll know, you'll learn a lot about it and then you'll be able, you'll be ready to make like a commercial game that uh, would maybe succeed. Because even if you do everything right, it may not always succeed. Uh, yeah. Um, I see this a lot with, with students, so teach, teach, teach the while the last uh, two years and uh, like it's, it's so obvious so like the first student game makes the first game and it's they have like these massive amount of ideas and they're all awful and you have to have to let them do it and also suddenly artists and programmers have to work together and they don't communicate at all and it goes horribly wrong and you warn them a couple of a couple of times but it's, it's a big learning process and then they they have then then suddenly stick they, they stick to a very simple idea and no no creativity at all but then they work like mechanically everything correct and then they start to experiment more and that is like this process to see is like really fascinating because when I was a student we had like in the whole uh, in, in, in the whole um, studies we made one big game and that has to be perfect in the end because it was for our CV and so and I'm very glad that this changed this attitude that you make a lot of different games and I know a lot of game developers who do like a game a week or a game a month where they like do a lot of little games and then after a year look at all these is one of these ideas worthy to, to and I think game jams and so help a lot now. So because people I know used to the idea that there's like these unfinished game ideas or concepts around and it's okay to have this. And nobody will look at you and say, Oh, what, what was that? Why, why, why did you make that game? That's not fun. That's like so. yeah. Thank you for sharing it. <laughs> I'm very happy to hear that uh, even uh, like the, the uh, institutes of uh, game making are uh, taking this approach, uh, and I'm also a big believer in game jams. I used to think of them like these uh, very places where you work really hard and mm -hmm. you get something that you don't really like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because you shouldn't learn by making game jams, you should like learn in your own free time, yeah. but you sh still should like limit yourself to a certain amount. Limiting yourself by time is very is a great way to like make simple games and force yourself to do a simple simple game. You can learn a lot from it, and there's also this pool of idea which is awesome. Some of the best games out there are like jam games that were maybe two full games. Um, I wonder if you encounter the situation where you Either you had and you see a game that is best dropped in the process, like something that took too long, too many resources. Like, is there a good time to let the game go? Uh, if you project to the future, but when, when you start building your game, you cannot know how much time it will take. Some, some people just assess a year, because a year sounds like a lot of time, you will definitely finish it in a year. But if, the, if a year has passed, and you really made a fraction of your game, maybe it's time to, like, maybe you can lie to yourself and say you're freezing it, and just backing off and uh, moving to simpler games. And uh, I think you should avoid sunken costs. Don't think, oh, I, I spent two years on this game, I must finish it now. If, if you're close to finishing it, uh, maybe you should, but if you're not, don't, like, people don't value this time. It won't help you that you spent two years about it, you should think about the future. 
blue screen, right? Okay. Question. Uh, you were talking about motivation, okay? Well, what? So I asked you. You were talking about motivation. Yes. So I, I had a lot of people joining my, my, my project, okay? And they were starting and they were working days and nights and they were highly motivated, okay? So I was happy with that. But it only lasted for, for two, three weeks. And then the situation turned the opposite. I had to, you know, to, to pursue them. I mean, suddenly, suddenly all their motivation was burned out within a few weeks. So I would rather, you know, uh, have people work consistently over long periods of time, but you know, don't burn out, don't work day and night. And how do you handle that? How do you handle motivation? How do you motivate people to work for, for long term? Um, in general, I'm not good at motivating other people. I think everyone should like do what they think is best for them. But when you when on 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 those kind of projects. I think the two best thing to do is like to aim for a small scope that if people are not experienced because why are they burnt out so soon because they expect it to be easy but it's hard and so I, I'd rather work with either more experienced people or make the projects small enough that this time of uh, working uh, like uh, this good good crunch time at the beginning will, would be enough to finish the game and another important thing is communication. If you communicate everything uh, you want from the game, and you make like a, a, a list that really contains everything, um, it may work. But it's also really hard to make that list because you, you, people will need to like work work extra for things you didn't foresee. And sometimes a game design uh, thing doesn't work, and you you should pivot from it. You don't have to stick with it. And so that's why it's hard. <laughs> But improve, try to communicate as best as you can and use a design doc, which, uh, which is like, a design doc sounds like a homework thing, but it's, 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 it's really... don't read them, usually. I think they... Because it's, it's, a design doc is not like a, 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 um, like this book report homework thing you should like write and submit to, to, your, to your school uh, teacher. It's something, it's, it's a tool of communication. You should like make it what you want other people to know, you should put it in there. What you, they, you think other people should make, you should put it in there. Many times the, the, this design doc is discarded uh, after a few months of development, and that's okay, but at the beginning everyone knows what they're coming into. And that's a good way to make sure that nothing, no expectations falls on the way. I think a design doc would really work, would, would have been really helpful with Volcano Tower. We had a few a few uh, uh, documents about like the, the uh, edu economic system and the money in the game, but not like a, a one that uh, uh, contains everything that would be in the game, even in point in bullets that would work. It, and it shouldn't be more if more than two or three pages if, if that's what people read. <laughs> yeah, I can also add like from my experience like. For the long run, the thing that helps the most I think, is just milestones. Like every the smallest milestone that you can make, but every milestone treat it as maybe a, a small game that you want to get to the end of it, and that helps motivation. Yes. When you're a programmer and you're leading the game, then the artists join you. Then you're the pro. Then in, in many times you find yourself. I find myself in the in the job of the art director. So there's someone that knows about art way more than I do, but I'm still have to be the art director and like direct the, the what what the the style and the tone of the game would be. 
and I think it does help to, to know more about the options out there. You don't have to know how to make an art, but you have to know what to expect and what, uh, what types of arts are out there. Should your game like be pixel art or like this glowy neon thing or uh, bubbles of text to <laughs> communicate and direct other people who do different things, even if you don't know how to do it yourself. And it's true for sound designers, and it's also true for programmers, because if you're making a game, uh, an art game, and let's say it's a fighting game, you should really know how like, the fighting should feel like, because uh, like, it's, it's really, a, all, all games are actually a lot about juice and game feel, and even if you're an artist and you're working with a programmer, you're gonna have to know how to direct this programmer with uh, those things, and like, even, I also recommend uh, like, learning a little code if you can, even if you're not going to code your own games, I think it, it can really help. And I'm trying to learn to do some art. I'm not good at it, but I'm trying. Do we have room for one more question? Yes. yes. Uh, you mentioned how a, it's uh, really hard to publish to Steam and consoles and stuff. Uh, and I'm currently working on my first game, which really hit home with uh, with what you're saying. Uh, what do you think about other ways of distribution, like itch.io, which is like really low-priced game, or like donations or stuff, just to not to make the money the goal, but to actually have an income of some sort? Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm using itch.io. All all my games are on itch.io. Nice. I'm brucey.itch.io. If you want, uh, all, almost all of them are free except for Volcano Tower PC version. And, and it's not really about the platform you're selling your game, it's about how well you are able to like market and make your game visible. Uh, in the old days, when you put the game on Steam, it was enough for a lot of people to see your game, and Steam was also like a stamp of quality, and they were, if your game would be on Steam, then people would buy it. It's still the, the, the situation for a little extent. If you put your game on Steam, then you get some purchases automatically. But right now, Volcano Tower is both on Steam and itch.io, and on itch.io, it has zero sales. All, all our sales are on Steam. Because... Um, itch.io would not make people notice your game, just a platform. You'll have to advertise the game yourself. Sure, yeah. So it's not about the, the platforms, it's about advertisement, but, but the people are used to Steam and people are, are uh, used, it's about uh, uh, consumption, uh, about how you're used to, if, you're, if, you're, if you already had your credit card on Steam, then buying on Steam is very easier to like put your yeah, credit card the in. The reason I ask this is because it's hard to put your game on Steam, and I can't yeah. do that, so itch.io is a good solution. Wh wh why you can't do that? It's hard. <laughs> you need a lot of well, it's possible, it just takes time and effort. If, if your game is, is good enough so you, people will buy it, it's also good enough to be on Steam. If it's not good enough for people who buy it, then it's, it's if you're just beginning and that's okay, you should really just release it for free, this is what I think. <coughs> but yeah, you, you will be able to put it on Steam. I have seen a lot of indie games that are like really indie and niche that nobody freaking knows, and they're on itch.io. Mm -hmm. And some people buy them, not a lot, but I mean... Okay. And, and you value those purchases over more people playing these games? Or not? Because maybe this paywall is just uh, doing you harm in the long run. Maybe That's your right. choice to, to make. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.